If you want to be able to graph sine, cosine, tangent fast, this is all I want you to focus on. This is all I want you to know. And it's actually really, really simple. It is just the unit circle, but, but, but not the whole unit circle, just these four points. If you know these four points, you can graph sine, cosine, and tangent fast and easily. Now, the good thing about these four points is they're so easy to remember. You almost like can't forget them because ladies and gentlemen, what is the radius of the unit circle? It's one. So that means this coordinate point is one zero. This coordinate point is zero one, negative one zero, as well as zero comma negative one. Now remember, these are coordinate points on an XY grid, so we can give them a XY designation. And then also remember at least the definitions of our sine, cosine, and tangent when we're dealing with coordinate points on the unit circle is that my sine of my angle is equal to the Y coordinate, the cosine of my angle is equal to the X coordinate, and the tangent of my angle is equal to the Y over X relationship. So what we need to be able to do is like, well, how are we gonna graph, how are we gonna take this information and that information to be able to graph our sine and cosine fast. Now, I will give you a little caveat. I am just doing one initial period. I'll kind of explain what you can further do if you wanna continue graphing it, or at least to verify things. But we're just gonna do one initial period. And basically what that means is we're gonna start from zero, right, on this initial angle, and then we're just going to rotate going around, finding all the values, in this positive direction. We're just gonna do one initial period. But obviously you can go in the other direction and you can go infinite many times in the same direction. So how are we going to graph y equals a sine of theta? Now notice I am introducing theta, right? A theta is gonna represent the angle, sine of something. Then that represents the angle that all these angles that make up on the unit circle. The important thing about this is I'm not using x, you could use x, but then that's gonna be kind of confusing with this relationship over here. So I want to make sure that I'm using theta as my input variable. So what that means, when I want to go ahead and graph the sine of theta, I need to have theta as my input variable and y is going to be my output variable, all right? So all we're simply gonna do is let's just go through these four points. Know those four points and then you're like, okay, this is easy. Now let's kind of go through the angles. Well, this first angle would be zero. This angle, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, let's go and use degrees. So that could be 90 degrees. Halfway around circle is 180 degrees. Three quarters of the way is going to be 270 degrees. And then all the way around the circle is obviously going to be a 360 degrees, right? So we have these four angles. Um, and again, you could also use radians. And actually, I don't know why I'm using degrees. I hate degrees. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to using radians. Okay, that's not a division. Ah, crap, let's go ahead and fix this. Okay, so we have our four angles. So we have zero. Let's go ahead and do pi halves, pi three pi halves, and two pi. All right, and then remember, the output can only be as high as one and as low as negative one, right? The value, the maximum value that we can get for our y value, or our x, you know, or any one of these values is going to be one. So we could say it's a one, or it's a negative one. So now, all we simply need to do, again, if you're given, I need to graph y cosine of theta, I forget what it looks like. Does it look like cosine, sine? How exactly does this graph look? Let's just start with our four angles. At zero, what is my y coordinate, right? Sine of theta equals the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle. And I think that's where a lot of times students get confused. Theta represents your angle, which is zero in this case. And then what we're looking for is the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle. So the y coordinate of the point on the unit circle at, at the angle zero is going to be a zero. Then let's go to our next angle, pi halves. What is the y coordinate? It's one. Then we go to pi. What is the y coordinate? Zero. At three pi over two, what is the y coordinate? Negative one. Oops, negative one right there. And then at two pi, what is going to be my y coordinate again? It's gonna be zero. And you can see as you keep on going around and around, this graph is just going to repeat itself, right? And again, you could go in the negative direction and you'd see when you go to negative pi halves, you're gonna be at negative one. And you can see that that graph repeats itself in that regard as well. But that is just going to be your initial period for sine. Now let's go ahead and do y equals cosine of theta. Now I'm gonna pick this up a little bit more. I'm only gonna show the positive version here. We know we have our four angles, zero, pi halves, pi, three pi halves, and two pi. Now again, remember the definition of cosine um, is going to be a little bit different for points on the unit circle. The cosine of your angle is going to be represented by the x coordinate on the unit circle. So this is my theta axis. Here's going to be my y axis. So again, going through the angles. 
My first point when x when theta equals zero is going to be the x coordinate for cosine, which is going to be a one. So we're going to start up here. Here, my x coordinate is zero at pi halves. At pi, my x coordinate is going to be a negative one. Sorry, got to go down there. And then at three pi halves, my x coordinate is back to zero. And then at two pi, my x coordinate is back up to one. So we can see this graph is going to look like this. Now let's get into the fun one, which is going to be tangent. Okay, now tangent, the initial period can sometimes make, is kind of hard sometimes when we're just going to the positive direction. So our initial period is actually gonna have some positive as well as some negatives, all right? So remember tangent, the definition of tangent of an angle for, in regards to points on the inner circle represents the ratio of y over x. So again, let's start at zero. So again, we're just gonna do two points to the right and two points to the left. All right, you could always do four points. Again, these graphs are going to continue in the positive and negative direction. But as far as showing you guys this initial period, I want, um, the initial period of tangent is actually gonna be in the middle. And I'll, you'll kind of see why that kind of makes sense. So let's go to zero. At the angle zero, my ratio of y over x is zero over one, which obviously zero divided by one is just going to be zero. Then we go to pi halves. The ratio of y over y over x is one over zero. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's undefined. How do we represent undefined values? with an asymptote. Now, what's important about an asymptotes? Asymptotes mean that the graph is always going to be approaching these values. Now, if you go back over to three pi halves, you get zero again. And so it's still kind of under hard to understand like what exactly is this graph gonna be looking like? I have two points and an asymptote here. So that's why we're gonna go now in this negative direction. If you go down this negative direction, what you'll see is negative pi halves, my ratio is negative one over zero, which again is an undefined value, okay? so. How do we understand what this graph is gonna look like? Well, remember, y over x. If you go between zero and pi halves, any y over x in this quadrant is always gonna be positive, right? Because as your coordinate point in here, x is positive and y is positive. So anytime you take a y over an x, you're always gonna get a positive value. So let's just pick a point and let's just say it looks like that. Over here in this fourth quadrant, as we go in the negative one, now we're dealing with an x comma negative y. Anytime the ratio of a y over x in this quadrant for these negative angles is always going to be negative as well. And then if you actually want to provide some values, you can see that, oh yeah, this graph looks like this because it always has to approach your asymptotes, okay? So again, if you have a quick like mental fart and you're like, I just don't remember what these graphs look like, all you need to know guys is these definitions and these four coordinate points on, on the unit circle and therefore then you can graph this quickly. Hope that helped.